What's up, everyone? I got some Thai food again and from our you know, favorite, new favorite Thai place, uh, Laris Rose Thai. And speaking of which, Laris Rose um, Thai, we're going to talk about <clears throat> Thai or God. And definitely, this Thai restaurant has favorites that wants to, if you remember, the test administrator named Nip Lara Rowe, right? Pretty close, anyways. Yeah, let's get into it. So, yeah, I was, man, I remember I, the first time I tried Laris Rose Thai, I've done this before, but you know, I ordered the fried chicken and fried rice, man. The fried rice is killer, dude. I'm telling you. Okay, so let's move on to today's topic of Tower God, episode 6. So, the episode opens up with Rachel visiting, you know, Bam. At this time, he's unconscious, and she gets to talk to uh, Kuhn for a bit. So, she wants to, she tells Kuhn to lie to Bam, saying that she's not Rachel, and that they'll only be a burden to each other if, you know, if they stay together. And currently... Uh, the Black March is in the possession of uh, Princess Anak, and it's revealed that also that Princess Yuri is one of the deemed a genius and was the only princess handed down one of the legendary 13 month series, obviously the Black March. So five, day, five days pass, passes and then Bam finally awakes. So Kuhn tries to fill in Bam. So while he was unconscious, uh, the next test artery started, and you know Bam, uh, even though he was unconscious at this time, he's still allowed to participate in this next upcoming test. So pretty much, literally, when he wakes up the day after, he's immediately jumped in um, to take the test. So uh, in this episode, Lyra Rowe, one of the test administrators, he explains that. Mostly people who climb the tower are form a party. Particularly, there are five positions um, when climbing the tower. So the first one being the fisherman, who is the person whose expertise in, is in close combat. The spear bearer, who controls and kills enemies from afar with the spear. Pretty self-explanatory, right? And then we also have the light bearer. Pretty self-explanatory as well. They illuminate the dark and um, gather information and distribute it in different circumstances circumstances to their party members. And then we also have the scout who investigates the enemy movements and also assists the fishermen as well. And then we're moving on to the last uh, party mem type of party position member, uh, the wave controller. So pretty much the the they're the directors of battle and they support and control the battle using the Shinsu. And we find out that uh, even though Bam was unconscious at this time, Lara Rowe already gave him the position as a uh, wave control, control controller, obviously, right? Since he has some power in Shinsu, right? Okay, let's get some more. But yeah, this episode is, um, wasn't quite action packed. Everyone is, you know, taking the test when they're assigned a certain uh, uh, position deemed by the administrators, and yeah, they're just having at it. Okay, so, you know, as soon as Bam wakes up from his um, injuries and just resting and so, of the vast sort, Kuhn just fills him, him, him on what's going on. So, he, of course, he tells him that he takes the test pretty much uh, the next day. And he also 
plays into lying to Bam that Rachel isn't really Rachel, right? And he does so feeling that he was also hurt by someone he was very close to. And I believe he thinks this might be just better for Bam in the long run, right? Instead of just obsessing over Rachel and just protecting her. He tells Bam that, you know, maybe she is Rachel and maybe she's not. But maybe if she is, all you have to do is just get stronger and maybe you can form a party with her one day. So, you know, in this sense, you know, it's, it's better for Bam to just be focused on himself for now. Maybe in the future he can reunite with Rachel, right? So, okay. So, as Bam is taking the test, he's met with a test administrator. I mean, a teacher. A test, a teacher. And it kind of looks like a goat-looking creature of some sort. But anyways, this this creature says that you to use more Shinsu and, you know, harness your Shinsu power. On each floor, you must form a contract. And of course, they do form a contract right then and there. And Bam is, when he closes his eyes and forms a contract with this being, this like some big um, mo monster of some sort. And uh, it definitely seems very powerful as well. And when it's called out to Bam, it says, oh, you want to form a contract with me? And obviously Bam says yes. He said, and then the monster or th this other strong being says, don't think this as a contract, but a shackle of sorts. So, ooh, I'm not sure. This this being, you know, definitely seems very powerful, but we'll see how it la later on it plays a part in Bam's um, future of, you know, aiding him to get stronger. So, moving on to the other party members, of course, Rack. You know, obviously, he's going to be the sp spear wielder, right? So, for his test, he has to hit an object from afar. And at first, he doesn't, you know, it takes some time. <clears throat> you know, to to train to throw a spear of that distance, and eventually he gets around um, to completing his test. And then, okay, Shibisu and Hate, remember, they're the former party members of Princess Nock. So, Princess, but they claim to say that Princess Nock um, broke ties with them and, you know, that wants nothing to do with them. So, they're left kind of alone. And I think Shibisu is a scout is at assigned the scout position and their duty is just to pretty much uh, find 10 friends within I think 10 days I believe or a certain amount of a certain amount of time and then of course Bam and uh, Kun agree as well and yes do you remember that that strong woman who was fighting the the strong character with the spirit in the crown game who injured Bam greatly we found out that her name is Endorsey, and she's also a princess of Jihad as well. And then we also discover that, you know, pretty much I think Kuhn is assigned the position as light bearer, and his duty is to uh, look up the, the backgrounds of the regulars participating within his group. So we, she, he re Kuhn research, researches info on Bam and Rachel, and to much of his dismay, dismay, he doesn't really find any info on them. And then also we find out that he reaches, researches on Rack a little bit, and obviously he pa passed his test as well. And then, oh, this is the juicy part right here. So <clears throat> he, really, he finds out that you know, Princess Je Anak is participating um, in, uh, in, the, uh, in this game, right? Of trying to, or in this um, test of trying to climb the tower, right? And he's he finds something funny, and he realizes that Prince Princess Anak is actually dead, but how is she still participating um, in these tests, right? And then eventually, the the person who's playing the Prince of Princess Anak is actually. The orphan of actually the princess of Anak. So it's revealed that Anak is out on a mission. <clears throat> she's at, she's an orphan, of course. Her mother was very happy. She ran away and was living with a chef who, according, according to her, made the best chicken pot pies. And eventually, Anak, um, Anak the, the daughter, <clears throat> finds out that she wants to get revenge 
on all the princesses because she believes that all the princesses of Jihad killed her mother and her lover as well. <clears throat> and the only reason why, she, yeah, she's climbing to the tower and yeah, trying to make it to the, uh, probably the king of Jihad as well. She wants to eliminate all those under the name of Jihad and would do anything it, it takes. So yeah, this episode it just it cuts off right there. But yeah, the right one was getting good, and of course, um, uh, Princess Anak and um, Princess Dorsey are fighting at this at this point in time. So yeah, um, whew, pretty full actually. I didn't get to all finishing the food. D very delicious though. But um, Tower God episode six, quite a good episode. I feel like every episode they keep on you know building up the story a little bit. We get to you know, know about, you know, the princesses of Jihad. Oh, I forgot to mention the princesses of Jihad. So they're not all, I don't believe they're not actually blood related, but they're actually like recruited, I guess, believe by, I guess, uh, the king of Jihad and on, to represent their families and tribes of that sort. So they have really no affiliation with each other. And maybe this is a way of like for, you know, king, maybe the king of Jihad's kind of bored, maybe for other you know, traps and families to compete against each other. So I guess maybe he's passing some time, you know, for some entertainment of some sort. At least that's what it looks like to me, right, as, uh, as of this moment. So yeah, um, thank you for watching. Hope everyone's, you know, doing well out there. <clears throat> All right, peace. <laughs>